In this video, we're going to see what a PN junction is. PN junction is a very important concept in electronic devices. If you look at devices like diodes, BJTs, JFETs, MOSFETs, FinFETs, and so on considering devices, most all of them con contain PN junctions. So PN junction is a stepping stone for people who start learning electronic devices. So it's a very important concept. To build a model for the PN junction, let us consider two pieces of crystalline semiconductor materials. In this case, the material we assume silicon. So let us assume the first material here, which I'm marking as one, is uniformly doped with trivalent or acceptor impurities, in this case, say boron. So it makes this piece of semiconductor as P-type semiconductor, in which the majority carriers, okay, majority carriers are holes and minority carriers are electrons. Now let us take the second material here and let us assume it is uniformly doped with pentavalent or donor dopants, say in this case phosphorus, okay, and this makes this piece of semiconductor material n-type. Okay. In this case, the majority carriers here are electrons and minority carriers here are holes. Now let us see how the energy band diagrams look for these two pieces of semiconductor material. Okay. Now, as these two materials are of silicon, the energy band gap between this EC and EV for these two materials will be same. And in this case, let us assume these two semiconductor materials pieces are at room temperature. So the energy band diagram looks will be 1.12 electron volts. This is known as EG, that is energy band gap. So it will be same for the both these energy band diagrams. Now, as the first material is doped with P-type semiconductor P-type material, so the Fermi level will be closer to the valence band edge EV. EV is the top of the valence band edge and EC is the bottom edge of the conduction band. So now EF in this case for n-type material will be closer to EC. Now, now one important concept to note here would be if you see the energy increasing in this direction would be electron energy increasing. So suppose say if I have an electron at this point, okay, say electron 1 and electron 2 at this point, electron 2 would have more energy compared to E1. So in this direction upwards, electron energy will be increasing. This is electron energy. Now, if you look at the other direction, let's say downwards, the electron energy will be decreasing. But there is another important concept, say holes, okay? With respect to holes, the energy will be increasing downwards okay if you move downwards whole energy will be increasing okay so this is a very important concept to understand in pn junction now let us consider moving these two pieces of semiconductor materials closer together and making them contact each other at these points so when we join the figure looks like this and i have made this p type with a different color yellow and n type with blue so that we can distinguish them so now when they are closer together now the majority carriers in n type are electrons and minority carrier in p type are electrons so the electron concentration gradient or the difference between these two materials is very high so as a result we will have diffusion current because of the concentration gradient so electrons will be moving from n type to p type as a result you'll have j n diffusion j means electric current density okay ampere per centimeter square so in this case it is electron current diffusion current okay so electrons move from n type to p type so the conventional current direction will be in the opposite direction, so JN diffusion in this direction. As we have donor atoms in n-type material, and when these donor atoms are left with one electron moving away from n-type to p-type, then this will be uncovered. 
so it will become a positive ion okay we'll have a positive ion because of charged electrons moving to the p side so now in p side we will have a acceptor ion whose hole okay because of the whole concentration gradient between p and n holes also start diffusing from p side to n side so if you look at the current directions now so holes are moving in this direction okay so we will have j h diffusion okay in this direction so when holes start moving in this direction we will have a uh, acceptor ion or acceptor atom in this case uncovered so when it is uncovered it becomes ion this ion will become negative because this whole spot is filled by an electron so we will have a negative ion here and positive ion in the n side because of electrons leaving so now there is a diffusion current due to the concentration gradient now if you observe this diffusion current continues but till what point they continue okay so if you see as this electrons move from n side to p side let us consider this electrons move from n side to p side it uncovers or it exposes the ions and in p side we'll have negative ions so there will be electric field built up and this electric field will be directed from positive ion to negative ion okay let me take a different color to show this so we'll have an electric field from positive ion to negative ion this electric field we just concentrate on this electron flow so that we won't get confused much okay so the electrons when they are diffusing they are going in this direction okay so as a result there is an electric field built up now if you see this built up electric field will pull the minority electrons in p side towards the n side that's how the electric field is developed so there will be electron flow in this direction so elect this is called j n drift the current flow because of the electric field present okay now let us take a step back and see there was a from starting point okay so there was a concentration gradient due to which electron flow was there okay due to which there was charges uncovered these ions are fixed in the lattice they can't move okay they are immobile ions or immobile charge so these ions will establish an electric field okay this electric field will lead to a drift current establishment so when the drift current is established okay so there will be a point where this diffusion current and drift current balances out each other so at that point of time this electric field how many carriers it pulls and produces a drift current those many carriers will move in the opposite direction and have a diffusion current so in steady state we will have this diffusion current and drift current balanced out each other so we can write j n drift will be equal to j n diffusion and similarly we can write j p drift equals to j p diffusion so th under equilibrium we will have this situation okay so this uncovering of charges will stop at that point under equilibrium so if i draw the uncovered charges okay or the depleted charges i mean depletion region depletion region we call it because the mobile carriers are depleted in that region let me draw that region and see how it looks this is how it looks and this distance is called junction width and this is also called as a depleted region this is called depleted region we have seen why it's because of the mobile carriers are depleted in this region okay but if you can see the j total j or the current density flow in this pn junction will be zero okay this j is equal to jp plus jn the current density due to holes and current density due to electrons we know that current density due to holes is the sum of current density drift current density of holes and diffusion current density of holes and they are equal and opposite we have seen they are opposite in 
in the figure while we are discussing so they will cancel out and it will be 0 and jn will also be 0 so j will be 0 but these components will be some finite values okay so under equilibrium when a pn junction is formed the current flow in this will be 0 so far we have seen how the electrons move holes move and how the ions are formed and depletion region is formed now we will see in terms of the energy band diagram for that I'm going to rub this off this area okay this is the band diagram before they were brought closer and made junction so if we let us start with this so now we have a lot of electrons here in this conduction band and when we join these two materials together these electrons are more so they start diffusing and going to the p side material okay as a result the number of electrons has decreased the overall energy of the system will be decreasing as a result we have seen that energy will be increasing in this direction if electron that is electron energy so if you see this energy diagram will be moving downwards related to this one suppose if we look at the holes if holes and we know that holes will be moving from here to here due to diffusion then in that case when holes move towards to this material we know that the energy will be increasing in downward direction due to the holes energy increase and that will be moving downwards as a result this energy band diagram will be moving downwards compared to this energy diagram so relatively both will be moving in the opposite direction but till what point okay we have seen from this explanation before that there will be diffusion current because of which there will be an electric field set up that electric field will bring out the diff drift current this drift and diffusion current balance out at a point where there won't be any net current flow okay and a depletion width would have stabilized and we'll have a equilibrium state in that state how the band diagrams look is if we see deep into the p junction i mean p type material away from the junction the energy band looks like this okay and the fermi level will be near to balance band and if you look in n type material okay the band diagram looks like this fermi level and balance band now the reason how i drew this is we know that there is net current flowing through the diode is zero so it means that the fermi level is stable okay we knew an uh, equation where the net current j can be written as j n say n times mu n times d e f by d x or we can say in terms of p p mu p d e f or d x we saw that j p and j n are going to be zero this is possible when e f is constant throughout so d e f by d x will be zero so that's why we have drawn it like this but in the middle region where we have de depletion region there is the point where this bands bend okay so there will be a bend here and this is the resultant EF and this is EC and this is EV now we will see in the further videos what this height is known as and how much is the width of this depletion region and how is the electric field profile inside the diode all these distributions we will discuss in the next video thanks for watching if you like it if you like the video please do subscribe and thanks for watching again